Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are actually going to be making an insect piece. Now I've made plush insects before but I've never made a full on art doll with clay pieces and stuff and that's because all the little legs are really fragile and I really was worried that if I made one it would be too fragile to really sell or anything but I've recently got into using epoxy sculpt and it's super strong and I thought it'd be perfect for this project. So the first insect that I want to try out is going to be the orchid mantis. I thought it'd be really colorful and pretty to work with and it has all those little delicate legs. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to start on is sculpting the clay head. Now, because the clay head really doesn't have anything super fragile on it, I'm just going to be using original Sculpey for it. So I'm starting off with a piece of wire. I've left it long enough so we can use it for the posable frame once we start putting everything together. And I'm just going to start adding clay to the end of the wire where I have a loop that way the clay has something to hold on to. Now an average mantis normally has a triangle shaped head but the orchid mantis has these eyes that stick out and kind of are at a bit of a point. So I'm going to go for more of a arrowhead shape. And then once I have my basic shape laid out, I'm then going to start working on breaking up the head into different sections. For this, I highly recommend using a reference so you can figure out where all of the line work and everything should be. The closer you get to where the mouth is, the smaller the little sections should be. And then once I get done laying everything out, I'm going to roll out some strips of clay to make some little fingery feelers that are going to go around the mouth. I'm going to place a feeler on each side of the mouth and then I'm going to break it up into different sections as well. I'm going to clean up the lines a little bit and then I'm going to work on adjusting the shape of the head just a tiny bit, just adding a little bit more detail to it. Lastly, I need to make some antennae. I figured for these I could just use some wire, so I'm going to stick them into the top of the head and then I'm going to add a little bit of clay to just kind of blend them into the face and make them look like they're not just little wires sticking out of the top of the head. Once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm going to put the clay head in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And while that's baking, I'm going to start working on the clay pincers and feet. Now for these, I'm going to be switching over to epoxy sculpt because of how thin and fragile they are. I want something a little bit stronger. I'm going to get my clay mixed up and I'm going to start rolling it out into little ropes. I'm going to try and get them as thin as possible. Next, I'm going to start adding the clay to a wireframe. I've got wireframes set up for all of the limbs and I've got it set up to where two limbs will be on each one. So the front feet will be together, the back feet will be together, and then the pincers will both be on the same wireframe. Now when working with epoxy sculpt, I found that adding a little bit of water to the clay helps you blend it a little bit more. It just kind of smooths the surface a bit. So while I'm trying to smooth out the clay for the leg, I'm just going to dampen my fingers and then just keep messing around with the clay until I get it nice and clean and straight. And then when we get to the end of the foot, we're going to start breaking it up into different sections. So I'm going to use my tool to kind of add some line work to kind of break up the end of the foot. And then I'm also going to add a little bit more extra clay to the end and make the shape of the toes. Each foot is going to have two tiny little toes, so I'm going to kind of spread those out a little bit. And then for the claws, I'm just going to add a tiny piece of wire. I'm going to get all four of my legs finished and then I'm going to move on to making the pincers. 
For the pincers, these are also on a wire frame, and we're just going to be doing the first sections of them. So I'm going to start adding some clay to the ends of the wire, and I'm going to have it kind of taper to a point. Now for the underside of the pincer, we're going to break it up and try and make it look a little bit more jagged. And then I need to add a little bit of a wire to the top to make this little finger portion that comes off of the pincer. Once I'm happy with how the pincers look, I'm going to set those aside to finish curing along with all of our legs. This will probably take about 24 hours and then we can start back up. Okay, so normally at this point I start on the painting, um, but we're going to have to do the painting and the assembling kind of at the same time. So I'm going to show you guys a pattern real quick for the different pieces that I need for the body, and then we're going to move on to sewing and getting them ready. I'm going to start on sewing the pieces for the legs first. So each leg piece is going to have an inside and outside piece. I'm going to sandwich these together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using the backing for the fabric. Um, I don't want to have the fuzzy side out, I want to have the flat side out. I'm just trying something new because I don't have the current fabric that I need for this and I figured I could use it this way. So I'm going to sew around the fabric for the legs. I'm leaving both ends open so we can flip it right side out and add it to the wire frame. Once I have it flipped right side out, I'm going to take my sewing machine and separate the more sail portions from the leg section. So basically, I want a section of the leg that I can stuff and another section that's going to be kind of flat. That way we don't have to worry about the stuffing going in there. So I'm going to get that done and then we're going to take our wire frames that have our clay feet on them and I'm going to run these over the wire frames and glue them around the bases of our clay parts. Now, I didn't close up the leg completely, that way I could flip it right side out. So what I'll do is I'm going to stuff the portion of the leg that I want stuffed, and then I'm going to sew up the rest of the leg. And then we're going to do the pincers in a very similar way, except with the pincers I'm just going to be sewing down the back portion of them to combine the two layers of fabric, and then I'm going to glue it around the clay portion of the pincer, and then I'm going to stuff and close them up around the wire frame. Once I have that stuffed and closed up, I'm then going to be taking my 3D fabric paint and I'm going to use this to make the more sharp portion of the pincers. So I'm just going to add little dots and I'm going to try and pull them to a point and we're going to have to let these dry. Now the main reason that I assembled the legs in the pincers first is because we need to paint the fabric along with our clay pieces and I figured it would be easier to blend everything together if the legs were assembled. So let's get started on painting our pieces. I'm mainly going to be starting with a off-white and I'm going to get all the clay portions completely painted so they match the fabric. Once I have everything completely white and I've let my paint dry, I can then start adding the colors. So I'm going to kind of be painting all of the pieces at once at first, and then once we get into more details, we'll start just focusing on one piece at a time. So right now, I'm just going to be adding pinks and purples and trying to blend that into the white. 
For the blending, I am going to be using a little bit of water. That way it blends into the fabric a bit more and it doesn't leave the fabric really hard. Um, basically, I want the fabric to kind of absorb the paint and I don't want to have it just resting on top. Now once I have the main colors kind of placed out, I'm going to start focusing on the painting for the head. And what I want to do is I want to get all the shadows into all those cracks and crevices to separate the different sections of the head. Now I don't want to use black, I figured that'd be too, just too strong of a dark color. So I'm just going to use a darker purple for this. I'm going to paint over the entire face with some watered down acrylic and I'm going to wipe away any excess paint. This should get all of my dark colors into the cracks and crevices. Now for the antennae, I'm going to blend them from the purple that the face is to kind of a more khaki color. And then I'm going to blend that to more of a brown color and then to a black. I'm then going to start adding some highlights to different portions of the face, mainly around the mouth, and then I want to add some detail to the eyes. For the eyes, I'm going to add a little bit of a different shade here and there to blend them from one to another, and then to finish them up, I'm actually going to take a more translucent pearl paint, and I'm going to go over them, that way they have more of a sheen, and then just add a tiny little dot. For the legs, I'm going to start painting the different sections. I'm going to use that dark purple that we used for the detailing on our face, and I'm going to start adding sections to break up the legs. So I'm just going to start with that, and then I can clean up the edges using a white and blending it into the other colors. For the tips of the toes, I want to blend the white into that khaki color that we used for the antennae. I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter though. For the claws, I want you to be able to see them a little bit more because of how tiny they are, so I'm going to go with a black and just lightly go over them. And then with the pincers, I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I want to break them up into different segments. So I'm going to start with that dark purple and just kind of figure out where everything is going to separate. Kind of clean that up with the white again. And then I'm just going to start adding more detail here and there. Kind of adding more of that khaki color to the finger portion at the very end. And then switching over to a black. I'm going to let everything dry and then I'm going to resin over the clay portions that we painted. I'm not going to be resining over the fabric sections, just the clay to help protect everything from peeling and stuff. We're going to let the resin cure overnight and then we can start assembling the body. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric for the wings. I've made it to where the pattern can just be folded over and I'm going to sew these with my sewing machine, flip them right side out. And then I'm going to take one half of our body and I'm going to cut it where I want to connect the wings. So I'm just going to cut that and then I'm going to pin the fabric together so we can sew the wings in place. And then I'm going to take the other half of the body and I'm going to pin the abdomen section together so we can sew around that and flip it right side out. Now, most people think the abdomen on insects would be the middle, kind of like us, but the abdomen is where the most important organs are, and for an insect, that is the very end. So it's going to be the little butt section. And 
next I'm gonna take the clay head with the wire sticking out of it I'm gonna adjust it to the length of the body and then we're gonna take our first set of legs and we're going to add that to the wireframe so I'm just gonna start wrapping the wires together and combining the two wireframes together I can then take our wireframe and I can slide the end portion into the stuffed abdomen. You'll notice that I've cut off a portion of the body and that's because we need to start sewing the fabric around the legs. So I've cut it where I want to have the legs and I'm going to start sewing the fabric around the legs. I'm going to then take the other section that I cut off and I'm going to start sewing it in place as well. And then we'll start sewing up the body on the sides until we get to where I want to add the other legs. I'll take the other set of legs and I'll start wrapping them onto the wire frame and then we'll do the same thing. We'll cut the fabric where we want to add the legs and start sewing the fabric around them. And then of course we're going to do the same thing when we add the pincers. Once we get those in place, I'm going to start gluing the fabric around the base of the head, stuffing and closing up the remaining portion of the body. And now that we have the body put together, we can continue the painting. So I'm going to start again with my purples and pinks and just kind of add them. For the body portion, I'm really trying to keep it a little bit on the wider side, but I still want to add a decent amount of pinks and purples to it. So I want to add a good chunk of detail to the abdomen. There's a lot of little lines and stuff that we can add to break it up. And then I'm going to start adding the little sections to break up the rest of the body. Just like we did with the legs, I'm going to switch over to that darker purple and just kind of break up the sections. And then there actually is a little bit of yellow that we need to add just kind of around the midsection and the very tip of the abdomen. And I'm just going to keep looking at my references and adjust the colors until I like how everything looks. I'm going to let the paint dry and then the last thing I need to do is stitch down the wings. That way they're not sticking straight up. Okay guys, and here is our Orchid Mantis. I think it came out pretty good. I had to do a lot of painting with it. Eventually, I want to get an airbrusher so I can actually like paint with that and it'll be a little bit cleaner and stuff. But for using acrylics and stuff like that, it came out pretty decent, I'd say. But yeah, I had so much fun making this project and I really want to do more insect pieces, so we might make this a series. I know in the um, Zodiac series, we have Scorpio, so we could do something with that more insect-like. Um, but if you guys have any other suggestions for different species of bugs and insects or even arachnids, um, let me know in the comment section below and we'll see what we can do next. And of course, I'm going to have our little mantis friend on my website, so if anyone wants to buy him and give him a new home, you can check the links down below for that. And while you're down there, you'll see a bunch of other links to different art supplies and stuff that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're interested in trying it out or you're just kind of curious on what I'm using, you can check those out. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, they are affiliated, so they do help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!